Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Recently, Intel released the SSD 750 series of product. We actually did a video review of it, and Alan did a full performance review over at PCPro.com as well. You can see it sitting right here in front of us. This is the new NVMe-enabled PCI Express SSD that really kind of is breaking new grounds in terms of storage performance. Now, one of the things, if you tuned into our live stream uh, that we had a couple of Intel guys on with us, was we talked about compatibility. That's really the main question mark we have about the SSD 750 series. Uh, so. Ken took it upon himself to basically, this is a subset of motherboards that we've plugged in, installed platforms on, and then tried to basically run our PCIe add-in version of the SSD 750. Uh, we looked at everything from Z68 to Z77, Z87, Z97, X99, X79, and even a couple of AMD platforms in there as well, the 990FX chipset and the A88X Pro from Asus is actually using an A107850K as its processor. Now let's start with the good news first. The good news is on all these platforms, the PCI Express version of the SSD 750 actually uh, worked fine as an add-in card, as, as the non-bootable device. If you already have an SSD or a hard drive and you want to add this as a secondary storage device um, that you want to install your games on and run everything that you want to run really quickly, it all works on all of these platforms. A uh, couple of caveats. One is, depending on your processor, if you have like a Sandy Bridge processor, say a Core i7-2600K or something like that, or if you have uh, a motherboard based on the 990FX chipset or something like that similar from AMD's platform, you're going to be limited to PCI Express 2.0 speeds, which, uh, based on our Addo benchmarks, basically caps you at about 1.5 gigabytes per second. Actually, pretty much exactly 1.5 gigabytes per second. On all the other boards where you have uh, access to PCI Express 3.0, you actually will be able to hit that theoretical peak of 2.6 gigabytes per second or so, although we did notice on platforms like the 7850K from AMD, even though this APU system has PCI Express 3.0, while the 990FX board down here has 2.0, it takes a little bit longer uh, for this to actually reach full speed. In other words, the, the, the single-threaded CPU performance of something like Addo, but is also comparable to what happens in Windows, will affect your kind of your, your performance there. You were still able to see full, we were able to see full speed on the A80X, A88X Pro motherboard with that A10 APU, but it did, took a little bit longer to ramp up. So that's good news. If you want to add this to your platform, you can do that. I think maybe the common sense ad idea of adding a 1.2 terabyte, thousand dollar plus PCI Express SSD to an APU system that maybe costs four or five hundred dollars makes a little bit less sense than say adding it to an X99 platform that you've already invested a considerable, a considerable amount of money in. You know, that's, that's a totally different debate. Um, Bootability, that's kind of where the real question mark comes in. Officially, Intel only supports Z97 and X99 platforms for booting of their NVMe-enabled SSD 750 series of products. Now, that's not a very wide range of products, right? There's plenty of people that have Z87 platforms or even X79 platforms that may want to take advantage of this new SSD. In our testing, though, only those platforms really had success or kind of fully integrated success. Obviously, we tested the X99 Sabertooth board from Asus initially in our review. That worked fine. Uh, and all the other X99 boards from MSI, Gigabyte, and Asus, I don't want to say all, but maybe most, have announced support for NVMe storage solutions through upgraded BIOS and UEFI uh, options, and they're available to download today. Uh, we also tested a couple of Z97 boards, Z97 Deluxe and the Z97 MX Gaming 5, with the most recent BIOS updates for those two boards, we were able to boot off of the 750 series SSD as well. That all works great. Surprisingly, the, uh, the A88X Pro motherboard the, with the A10-7850K processor was able to boot as well. It was the only other board other than the Z97s and X99s that we looked at that was able to boot. It actually showed up as a PADA device of sorts, um, which seemed odd, but it showed up in the BIOS as a bootable device. We installed Windows to it and it worked and it came up and we were able to boot and run Windows off of it without a problem and it still ran at the same speed it did when it was an add-in card. Would I recommend you do that? Again, probably not. Look at the investment that you make in this platform versus the investment in a particular SSD. And you know that's going to vary depending on the board manufacturer, what BIOS version you're using. It's not a supported thing, so keep that in mind. Uh, we're basically at a point here where we can say, 
Intel's claims of only being able to boot in Z97 and X99 boards seems to be pretty accurate based on our testing. We're still waiting on other motherboard manufacturers um, like ASRock and EVGA to kind of release their updated BIOS and UEFI versions that will support NVMe boot. But right now we have a handful that we've been able to, to get to function. If you are adding this to another platform or if you're, just, if you're not making it a bootable drive, you're just adding it to a system, it looks like it'll be pretty safe as long as you have a PCI Express 3.0 uh, by four slot on your platform ready to go. So feel free to, uh, when these become available here at the beginning of May, purchase your 400 gig or 1.2 terabyte version of the SSD 750 series product. Uh, make sure you go to PCPro.com, check out Alan's full review. We'll link it in the description here as well so you can get all the background information on what makes the SSD 750 series uh, of product so substantially better than other stuff that is out there. You will pay a little bit more for it, but it's uh, it's pretty impressive stuff. So if you were curious about compatibility concerns for the new SSD series, there you go. Thanks for watching, guys.